Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. I'm Jim Boak. I'm here at the Salford Assembly Bay for the secondary tillage tools. And of course, when you're in this section, you're thinking pretty much tillage all the way down the line. As uh, producers, we've you know you've spent the entire winter right from harvest till now planning on how you're going to prepare the seed bed, and it's kind of a, a rule of thumb around here that uh, the less tillage, the better. So what you want to do in creating a seed bed is try to set yourself up for as little tillage as possible. Now that means something different for everybody. Uh, everybody thinks differently for one thing. Uh, we have different soils to manage. We have different attitudes and understandings about residue and indeed our soil and climate plays a factor in, in how we handle residue. The fact is, is we've been pent up all winter storing up all this energy thinking and come this time of year in early April we want to get to the field and, and start working and maybe the most commonly uh, the most common mistake is to get into the field too early to be a little bit impatient and uh, there's a number of, of farmers that should should take the advice of the no-till uh, farming crowd when you think it's time to go to the field take a week off and go fishing or take the kids to Disney World the, the most common mistake and it's one that uh, you think you get away with is is working the ground, working the soil too wet. And invariably if you do that, uh, you're condemning yourself to more than one pass. Uh, so that's uh, financially uh, draining. Uh, the second pass and the third pass almost always reduces yield <laughs> compared to that first pass. So it it pays from an economic uh, point of view from fuel use, man hours, tractor hours to, to be patient. And, and so how do you know uh, whether the soil is uh, fit or not to start working? The uh, very best way is to dig with your hands. I uh, learned to dig with my hands. They tell you a lot more than you could ever learn with a shovel or a spade. Uh, get down on your hands and knees and dig. Uh, dig down three, four inches deep and feel the texture of that soil. Rub it in your hands. If, if it sticks together, if it forms a clump, chances are very, very good unless you're one of those lucky people to farm perfect sandy clay loam soils. Chances are very good it's too wet. If you do work it too wet and happen to be lucky enough to be able to beat it down in two or three passes, you think you've, you've probably gotten away uh, with it, uh, however not so. You, d you don't see it in the grain tank because you haven't done any comparisons, but I'll guarantee you you've lost yield. But worse than that, you've, you've crippled yourself for the next few seasons because you've created uh, compaction and increased the density of that soil. And that's not something that you, know, you can cure overnight if you've increased soil density. So, so it's, it's like a lump uh, a lump of soil or a clump of residue, they're best handled by not creating them to start with. 